Hey, it's me, Hannah. <laughs> it's here. Ren Fair season is upon us. I am so excited to be making it up to Maryland Renaissance Fair's opening day this year. For opening day, some friends and I have decided to put together some chainmail looks that I can best describe as hot goth girlfriend meets female armor tropes. It's August, it's hot. Let's show some skin about it. Now I have some pretty serious delusions coming into this project. Making chainmail isn't particularly difficult, especially if you buy the pre-cut rings like I've done, but it is extremely time consuming. And I wanna make a couple different pieces to wear. Luckily, like I said, I'm not looking for full coverage armor here. So maybe I can pull this off? Here's kind of what I'm thinking. Yeah, we all know I'm no artist, but this does give me an idea of what I can now start working towards. It does its job in terms of helping me visualize. So I think what I'm going to start off with is the chainmail bra. The easiest way to do this would be to just make two triangles out of chainmail and then connect them. I am tempted to try to use a sort of sewing construction technique when it comes to the cups of the bra and essentially make two or three pieces of chainmail fabric to then connect them like you would if you were making the cup of a, a dress or shirt or a bra. But knowing the amount of work I have to do with less than 10 days to go, I'm gonna try to steer clear of a new technique and just stick with what I know. And that is triangles. The first step of any chain mail project, assuming you already have the rings, is to just go through and close a bunch of rings. Whether you make the rings yourself or you order them like I did, they tend to come with this little gap between the two ends of the ring. So our first step is to close that gap. This just takes a little shimmy of the two ends close together and then you're left with a perfect ring. Now I just need to do that 500 more times. Now that I have like 400 closed rings, it's time to start making 100 four-in-ones. Making the four-in-ones is pretty straightforward. We're gonna start by opening up a new ring, piling on four of the closed rings, and then closing that one ring back up. And voila, four rings in one. And now it's time to do that 99 times more. Just like sitting here at my kitchen table, not necessarily the most comfortable or ergonomic place to be doing this, but I do find having a tabletop like this um, makes it a little bit easier to kind of go from pile to pile. And I'm never really put in a position where I have to put down my pliers, which is, you know, kind of makes things go a lot faster. And as I've already mentioned, we don't have a lot of time on our side, so speed is my friend. Okay, now just to do it again. I 
I mean, come on. That's, that's pretty cool. So last night what I did was just make a really simple chain, like a halter top, and then one to go around to the back and I added this little clasp in as well so I can kind of make it a little adjustable depending on what I'm wearing underneath. I also have a tiny little connection point of a couple rings here as well, but those were very simple to make so I just made them off camera. So now I'm gonna go ahead and pivot to the skirt pieces and this will be a similar process in terms of like I'm gonna be making two shapes. One will be on the front, one will be on the back, and I'm going to connect them using a belt. The belt will essentially be the same orientation of the four-in-one, but just one long row of, of four-in-ones. I think I'm going to go ahead and pivot the orientation of the skirt panels so that they are that kind of more horizontal orientation. Essentially be making a couple different columns of four-in-ones and then connecting the columns until I have a skirt panel. I have a couple four-in-ones left over, but I'm going to have to go back and create more closed rings, then create more foreign ones, and then create those columns before I can really start constructing the skirt panels. So I guess I'll get comfortable, throw on a show, and see you in the time lapse. So the last piece of the puzzle here is going to be a bun cover inspired by a piece by Lady Evil Metals. I'm not sure how they did theirs, but I'm going to take a crack at it and see what I can come up with and I'll show you what I end up doing. First things first, I'm going to take a collection of smaller rings. I typically use a 14 gauge 5 16 inch uh, jump ring, bright aluminum jump ring. But for this I am going to use a couple different shapes and sizes. So I'm going to start with a slightly larger ring and put 10 smaller rings on it. If I wasn't in a rush, I would be closing these smaller rings for sure, but they will end up kind of tucked in some other rings, so I'm not gonna stress about it right now. Okay, so I have something that looks like this. If you look really closely, I've actually gone ahead and added a, an even smaller ring into the center of this just to take up a little extra space but I don't think that that's necessarily a requirement. Now I'm gonna open up a 14 gauge ring and take two of those outer rings from my 10 in one and put that onto the 14 gauge jump ring and close that up. And I'm just gonna go two by two around the whole piece. So I'll have five of those 14 gauge jump rings. Now I'm gonna take another 14 gauge jump ring and use it to connect one of these smaller rings from each of the two 14 gauge rings that are next to each other. So I'm kind of creating a second layer here, almost like a weave. And then again, just one from each of that bottom row of jump rings, bottom layer of jump rings. And 
Now it'll really start to look like a flower. So we're gonna do that one more time, taking one of the small rings from each of the top layer of jump rings and connecting it with another 14 gauge ring. This is where it'll start to get a little tight. So we gotta make sure we're just getting those two small rings. Now, I don't really know if this has a name or if this is a, um, you know, standardized technique and I'm just not aware of it. But if it is an established weave and I just don't know what it is, go ahead and let me know. Um, drop a comment. I'm, I'm happy to learn. This is actually really fun. I never really thought that I would do much more than just big sheets of four in one, but I am actually having a lot of fun playing around with different weaves to get something a little more ornamental here. So now we're gonna take some of the smaller jump rings and feed them up between each of the sort of flower petals, making sure to catch all three rows of jump rings. It can get a little tight, so just be patient while you're finagling this. And we're gonna do that in between every petal. Now we're gonna take some even smaller rings and connect these rings over the bigger petals. Do that all the way around. And now we have a cute little shape. So I'm gonna take this and this and connect these from ring to ring, tiny ring to tiny ring, using probably a variation of different size rings. And I'm going to do that probably with a central one and then a collection of five. And that will then be cinched around in a bun shape. I'm definitely gonna have to play around with it a little bit. So I will do that off camera. And once I'm done with that, I will then have a full fledged Ren Faire outfit to show you. I'm so excited for opening day. I'll see you there. Okay, what do we think? I. I'm really happy with how all this turned out. This is one of the first projects in a while. I feel like I- <laughs> Projects in a while, I feel like I This is one of the first projects in a while that I feel like I like actually nailed um, based on kind of the idea I had in my head. I am particularly happy with how my bun cover turned out. Uh, I'm really excited about this. This is probably something I'm gonna wear just in everyday life. I love it. And the fact that it kind of took me out of my comfort zone of the four in one pattern uh, I, you know, I'm excited to explore chainmail jewelry and other chainmail patterns and things like that. All right, it's time for us to head into the fair. Um, I had so much fun making this and I already know I'm going to have so much fun at the fair. And if you had as much fun as I did, it would mean the world to me if you would like and subscribe. And if you do, I'll see you in two weeks for my next video. Take care. It's starting.